dumb deals. That's what Warren Buffett said about Kraft Foods buying Cadbury and the decision to sell its pizza brands. But Kraft CEO says the Cadbury deal was a great move for the company. In fact, Kraft now expects to squeeze an additional $1 billion in revenue from the transaction by 2013. That news yesterday sent Kraft shares to a 52-week high. We spoke to Irene Rosenfeld in a Bloomberg exclusive about the skeptics. We are very excited. We were as excited today about the Cadbury acquisition as we were when we made the uh, initial offer. It is transformational for the company. It sets us up on a, tr a very different growth trajectory, both in terms of the categories in which we participate, higher growth categories like snacks, the opportunity to have a broader geographic footprint, particularly in developing markets, mm -hmm. and the opportunity to have more participation in faster growing immediate consumption trade channels. You announced yesterday uh, you do expect to be able to screen out an additional one billion dollars in revenue by 2013. Yes. Uh, where is this going to come from? It'll come in three areas. It'll come from white spaces, the opportunity to put craft legacy craft products through the Cadbury distribution system in markets like uh, India and Africa, mm -hmm. Turkey, for example. The opportunity to put legacy Cadbury products through the craft distribution system in markets like Brazil, Russia, and China. So they're highly complementary companies. Our footprints are quite different, and the opportunity. To, uh, to be able to leverage the white space. We have a terrific opportunity to, uh, to benefit from the sales and distribution strength of Cadbury and their markets, particularly in immediate consumption channels. That very nicely complements the distribution strength of Kraft in traditional grocery stores. And lastly, the opportunity just to take some of the ideas from one product to the other. Just yesterday, Kraft shares hit a 52-week high. But if you take the perspective of what's happened this year, you've had a big battle up until this point. Um, Kraft's biggest investor reduced his stake by more than 1%. Warren Buffett, uh, Eaton Park, Tryon Fund, a number of very high-profile investors have stepped back from their positions. What is it that they don't understand about the strategy you're laying out? I think a number of our investors uh, had uh, have some skepticism about the synergy assumptions that, uh, that that will come as a result of combining the two companies. Uh, I believe the uh, one of the core competencies of Kraft has been our ability to generate synergies as we have combined companies. We bought the uh, Lou Biscuit business in 2007, and we've generated considerable synergies there. We bought Nabisco way back in 2001, and um, we believe that uh, we have a very good handle on where these $750 million of synergies will come from. Mm -hmm. We're making excellent progress. We announced yesterday that we are on track to, to deliver those synergies. We should generate about 15% this year, 70% by next year, and then 90% by the third year and I think the challenge is just as we deliver the synergies I think uh, I think our investors will uh, will continue to uh, uh, to uh, to feel good about uh, about the company um, the naysayers of course as you well know and I'm sure you've read the press has uh, say that you overpaid for Cadbury um, Kraft's largest shareholder came out publicly in opposition to the deal here's what Warren Buffett said to Bloomberg in January She's a first-class human being. She's done a, a perfectly decent job running Kraft. I think this deal is a mistake. I think <clears throat> selling the pizza business was a terrible mistake. What was it like to hear that in the middle of an already difficult situation? Uh, we we set out uh, a strategy to transform the company in terms of the categories in which we participate, in terms of our geographic footprint, and Cadbury uh, was a critical piece of that puzzle. Uh, uh, as I had laid it out for all of our investors, we believe that this would set us up on a new growth growth trajectory. Warren has said on many occasions that uh, when uh, he's concerned about synergies, he's a little skeptical about the ability of companies to generate synergies, and when a company makes an acquisition, he buys two cards. Mm -hmm. One is a congratulatory card, the other is a sympathy card, and uh, I feel quite comfortable that we will receive a congratulatory card in, uh, in, 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 in not too uh, long a period of time. He's got a tremendous platform. In May, to his shareholders, he said that the decision to sell the pizza business and buy cash was dumb. That's a harsh word. Have you spoken with him since then? I have uh, contact with Warren, as I do with with, uh, with all of our investors. Uh, I understand that uh, he liked our pizza business. We liked our pizza business very much. But as we looked at our long-term growth strategy and the opportunity to expand it beyond North America, we made the decision that, uh, that it, it did not belong in our portfolio long-term. How did that change your conversation with the board? Was there sort of a moment of truth, a, a breakthrough where you said, 
he's wrong. I know this is the right decision for the company because those kind of public comments had to be making your job as a CEO, your effectiveness and your decision-making ability uh, come under fire. I have enormous respect for Mr. Buffett, as I do for all of our investors. Uh, I understand that there is skepticism about our ability to realize value from the combination uh, of, uh, of Kraft and Cadbury. And I think time will tell as we deliver uh, against the targets that we've laid out. Uh, I think, I think we, will, uh, we will make our case quite clearly. She says that while the U.S. economic recovery is happening slower than the company expected, she told me that Kraft is now in a better position since they've acquired confectioner Cadbury. I began by asking her about the backlash when Kraft acquired one of the iconic names in British business. Cadbury. Cadbury is a British icon. It's one of the reasons we were so interested in it. It is an iconic brand. It is uh, a beloved brand. Uh, and so the opportunity to continue to invest in that franchise and to grow it over time is something that's quite I mean, did you uh, expect to, to see those demonstrations or Union Jacks out there, you know, being hung up in the pub? People out there really feeling like uh, they were worried about their jobs, you know, factory workers out there questioning what was going to happen to them. I think there was uh, clearly uh, a stronger reaction than we might have expected for two reasons. One, because we have every intention to invest in the business and to grow it, and also because we have a pretty good track record of doing that. I feel very good about the fact that we've been able to retain uh, the uh, key employees that we had made offers to. About a third of our top management comes from Cadbury. And I think as they see us making investments in these franchises around the world, that goes a long way toward helping uh, people to feel more comfortable. I'd also say our business in the UK, uh, despite a lot of the public relations that were, uh, that were uh, out there, um, it continues quite strong. So I feel very good that uh, as the initial emotion subsides mm -hmm. and, uh, and as consumers and investors see that we are actually uh, putting our money where, where our mouths were, um, that, we will, uh, that they, will, they will feel quite comfortable. Do you worry about protectionism in other markets? I do. I do. I think um, uh, there there are uh, in 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 a number of countries there are uh, the, there is a concern uh, about tariff barriers and and other forms of protectionism. You don't see um, that in China though, but in Europe, in our in our categories, that has not been uh, a, a particular issue for us. Mm -hmm. um, with the UK, one of the things that was held on to there um, as a rallying point was the decision to first say there were not going to be job cuts at many factories and then, you know, months later going and cutting in hundreds of jobs in, in many of those same locations. Do you regret uh, first publicly you know, saying you wouldn't do it and then going ahead and cutting those jobs? Well, l let, me, let me just remind you, if I might, Margaret, as to what, what, what we had said, which was simply that we believed we, were, we would be able to keep one of the factories open that Cadbury had announced for closure. And we simply said that because given the scale of the combined business in the UK as well as on, in continental Europe, we thought we, we, we would need a lot of that capacity. As it turned out, when we actually were able to have access to the company and to, uh, to, to understand more about the internal workings uh, there, uh, it turned out that that decision had really proceeded far too, too far for us to be able to reverse it. I mean, you're one of the world's largest food companies. We're looking at input prices climbing, wheat flying, uh, coffee climbing as well. Uh, what are you forecasting there for 2011 and the rest of 2010. We we do expect input costs to continue to increase. What I feel best about, though, is the investments that we've made in our brand franchises over the last couple of years give us uh, considerably more pricing power. Mm -hmm. So we are finding that we are able to price to reflect those input costs. Uh, and given the strength of our brands, uh, we, we are able to, uh, to to get that pricing realized. Is this realized. The, the kind of environment you would feel comfortable raising prices to retailers in? Yes. I mean, we are we are doing that as we speak, uh, uh, given the uh, significant spikes in a number of, uh, uh, of, of key commodities. Uh, it's, it's, it's really uh, uh, incumbent upon us, uh, particularly as category leaders in a number of our categories, to, uh, to react to those input costs. You see the growth internationally but can you characterize for me the way you see the environment here in the United States right now? Where is the consumer and where is uh, this national economy? Uh, 
the consumer recovery in the U.S. Is, is, has been quite slow. And uh, I think the good news is uh, so many of our products are value offerings, whether it's macaroni and cheese, cold cuts, craft singles that make grilled cheese sandwiches uh, uh, that, that uh, certainly are, are, are very satisfying meals in tough economic times. So I think in general our, our business is, uh, is, is uh, well situated in difficult uh, economic times, but the recovery in the U.S. has been uh, a little bit slower than we might have expected. Thanks. Uh, that was uh, Kraft CEO Irene Rosenfeld speaking with me just earlier today right here at Bloomberg. And it was interesting, I know, Scarlett, you've been looking a lot at commodity mm -hmm. costs. They're one of the world's biggest food producers, and they sell to the biggest retailers out there. Yep. And it was really interesting to me to hear uh, her say quite directly, yes, we do feel comfortable raising costs to those we sell to, to the Walmarts of the mm -hmm. world, to those who have our items on their shelves. But I guess it's a question of you have to in this environment. If you look at what's happening with wheat, with yeah. coffee, with sugar, with others. These companies themselves have cut costs so much that they have to pass on these extra costs to the to their customers. And uh, Kraft is not the only one. Sara Lee made the point too that they're going to have to raise prices in a couple of the countries that they operate in because of rising wheat prices, rising sugar prices. They blame speculators, hedge funds. Right. And then you go to, well, what does a retailer do? Can the retailer raise the price to the everyday consumer, yeah. to you and me? What is that going to mean for their margins if they can't, if they're paying more? to the Absolutely. producer themselves. So it's a, an interesting narrative out there for the overall uh, economy.